Николаевич. Добрый день, дорогие друзья. Московский урбан. Following. My name is Angelina Davidova. I am a journalist writing about ecology. I've been participating in UN negotiations regarding climate change, and I welcome you at the presentation of our um, exceptional speaker, the President of the World Water Council, Loïc Fashon. Mr. Loïc Fashon will be talking with him about the issues of water security, the right for water, and Mr. Fashon will be talking about how megapolises are solving problems of the lack of water resources today. According to UN, by 2050, almost 2 billion people on our planet will be feeling the lack of um, drinking water. The issue of water security is becoming ever significant politically, economically, and technologically. It is important for the development of tech and for the health and daily well-being of people because we are not only using water for well-being and health, we need it for economical tasks and functions, for agriculture, etc. All of the latest climate forecasts of the intergovernmental group of uh, climate change experts are saying that the current uh, change of climate will be making a, a more and more stronger impact on water security. Issues of water are becoming more and more urgent for every significant city in Russia. That's why we're talking today with Loïc Fashon, and he, being the president of World Water Council, will be talking about what the situation is right now and what we can be doing today and are doing today to solve the problems of water security. Let me briefly introduce Mr. Loïc Fashon. He is the president of the World Water Council since 2018. He's been also uh, taking this position since 2000, from 2005 till 2012. Over 25 years, he has been actively promoting and educating uh, people in the issues of water security and sanitary for everybody. He's graduated from the political sciences faculty. He's working as a public administrator. He's been the deputy mayor of Marseille. And in 19, from 1989 uh, till uh, 1997, he was the mayor of the Tre Commune. He's also been the CEO of the Company for Water Supply in Marseille from 1991 till 1919. He's the member of a number of intergovernmental organizations, non-for-profit organizations, and uh, expert organizations regarding the emergencies uh, of water supply. He's also founded the HELP organization, uh, trans Sahara organization, sorry, um, to support during the emergencies regarding water. In 2003, Mr. Fashon got the um, uh, uh, Order of the uh, Religion in France. We're very glad to have you here with us, unfortunately in a virtual format, but we're very much looking to your talk. So, uh, water security, water security for cities, water security for large cities. What's happening? What are the main challenges? What is being done already? Please, the, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you, madam. Uh, good morning, everybody. Good morning, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, dear international participants, uh, uh, dear uh, Russian friends. I'm very pleased to have this uh, opportunity uh, to address you today, virtually at least, although I, I would really love to meet you uh, and discuss uh, uh, in person in the great and, and beautiful city of Moscow. Uh, it's the first time for myself and the World Water Council that I am invited to participate in the Moscow uh, Urban Forum. Such an important international event about the development challenges that the global uh, mega cities have been facing for a long time. Water and access to water and sanitation are at the heart of these challenges. Water indeed connects all 17 sustainable development goals. And water is also central to efficient climate evolution, mitigation, and adaptation. Yet before I explore deeper the risks leading to the current global water crisis and the opportunities that exist to temper or even build back better, let us go back in the time. It will allow us to see the bigger picture to understand that the ongoing global crisis cannot be divided into multiple 
different crises, such as uh, climate, uh, biodiversity, ozone layer, water crisis, etc. Because they cannot be considered separately as distinct problems independent of each other. On the contrary, these crises are deeply interlinked. They influence and exacerbate each other. And above all, they all have the same cause, our human behavior, our human activities, our human societies. After 1945, the world entered in a phase of great acceleration, touching almost every aspect of our society and ways of life. But can we continue to grow endlessly, especially in terms of population and economy, without taking into consideration the fact that we are living in a world with limited resources? This question is not new, but are we ready to act accordingly? In this context, global water is in danger. Water is suffering or will soon be suffering everywhere in the world due mainly to our excessive production, overconsumption, and through away culture, impacting dramatically our environment. And in the short term, right now, poor water management is much more responsible for negative effects, effects on the quality and quantity of water available than climate evolution. Today, over 2 billion people, 2 billion lives in countries experiencing extremely high water stress in what we call the triangle of first. The sat stretches from uh, southern Spain to India, uh, including the Horn of Africa, uh, sub-Saharan countries and the Middle East. Water is also missing in much more developed countries, like in, uh, in France, like in uh, Great Britain, or even in the US in California, which is uh, now suffering from water scarcity. For a century, man has been abusing water by multiplying competing uses exacerbated by the pressure of growing megacities. But also in rural areas, agricultural productions often focused on monoculture are damaging for the environment. Population growth, concentration and industrialization have not taken into account the level of fresh water in the rivers, which have been sinking quickly or are completely polluted. With urbanization and ongoing mass migration to cities, many other cities across the world experience or may experience water shortages. Ladies and gentlemen, dear friends, water is life. Lack of water leads to diseases, poverty, and to death. Water is our unique, precious, common good that we must cherish wherever we live. And the value of water itself cannot be measured in money. Access to water is in sufficient quantity and quality and to sanitation. Don't forget sanitation. Our basic human rights, which have been written in constitutions of many countries. But without water security, these rights remain just a piece of paper. Understanding an assessment of water risks is a vital component in water security strategies and prevention of potential water crisis. Risks may be chronic, for instance, long-term periods of dryness, 
or acute. For instance, low water reservoir in cities. Acute and chronic risks are organically interlinked. An acute risk, if not treated properly and timely, may become a, a chronic risk and reciprocally, we need to rebalance water resources to produce more water and consume less and better. Because water is a precious resource. We also need a common approach to river basins, intranational and transboundary, uh, once through integrated water management. It's a process in which national governments, down to local municipalities, even to regional settings, work constantly together. Basin and transboundary cooperation are essential to prevent potential conflicts arising from upstream downstream relationship. Добрый день, дорогие друзья. Московский урбанистический форум. Hello, dear friend. Moscow Urban Forum continues. Uh, we apologize for having some technical issues, but now we are going back to our lecture, to our wonderful speaker, and once again I give the floor to Loic Fashon, who is the head of World Water Council, and he tells us about how megacities deal with water difficulties. Louis, the floor is yours. We also need a common approach uh, to river basins, uh, intranational and transboundary ones, through integrated water management. It's a process in which uh, national governments, down to local municipalities, even to regional settings, work constantly together. Basin and uh, transboundary cooperation are essential to prevent uh, potential conflicts arising from upstream downstream, a relationship in national and international levels. The impacts of newly constructed dams and diversions can also increase political tensions in a, a few transboundary river basins. For example, regarding uh, Blue Nile, uh, the relationship between Egypt and Sudan as downstream countries on one side and Ethiopia, one of the upstream countries, which is building the Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam on the other side, it has been deteriorating uh, recently. Fortunately, there's also many positive examples, such as uh, a Senegal uh, River Basin uh, in Sub-Saharan Africa, uh, and also the Danube uh, Basin Authority uh, gathering uh, 17 different uh, countries. We need a, a complex and comprehensive approach to water based on innovative technological solutions such as uh, wastewater treatment and reuse, mastered uh, long distance water transfers, environmentally sensitive desalination. We need innovative and sufficient financing and political commitment implemented in wise political decisions. Ladies and gentlemen, water has become a political challenge. Water is a political commitment for the future of men and nature. Water is politics. The governance of water is important. Water challenges absolutely need to be addressed locally. Local authorities are key actors to political action for water security. The World Water Council is gathering 400 active members from over 60 countries across five continents. The Council represents hundreds of thousands of people all over the world working uh, for access to water. For 25 years, the Council has been working to promote water and water security to make it a global priority, to place it at the top of political agenda of international organizations such as uh, the UN, the World Bank, and the major uh, agencies through the states, but also through uh, local authorities. This is the reason why our World Water Forums 
the largest world uh, event on water co-organized with the hosting country every three years, foster a robust political process. Cities, towns, and rural areas are the main actors to achieve water security and provide access to water and sanitation for their local populations on a daily basis. In this respect, the ninth World Water Forum to be held in Dakar, Republic of Senegal in March 2022, will mobilize heads of states and governments, ministers, parliamentarians, basin organizations and local authorities to propose concrete commitments and bring responses to suffering populations. The forum's four core priorities are water security, obviously, water for rural development, cooperation and governance, innovation and financing. Join us on the road to Dakar to prepare and hold a successful forum of mayors and local authorities. Share your experience and solutions to improve water security with the world. Thank you for your attention and uh, I'm ready to answer your questions. Um, Mr. Luc Fashon, that was indeed a very analytical but also inspiring speech which we heard from you. Um, I especially liked how you said in the beginning that there's not a single crisis. All crises are interconnected, be it the water crisis, be it climate change, be it the diver diversity what a, you, you, you know concerning uh, water security. Um, water security uh, means very, very clearly, very concretely, producing more water and at the same time consuming less. Because despite our constant efforts, the demand for water is growing faster than the supply. And in concrete terms, this means generating more resources by, for example, pumping deeper when necessary, storing water, interconnecting dams, transferring water over long distances, and improving uh, uh, treatment and, and supply. But, but at the same time, it's essential to understand that we have to control water use and save water, manage our resources correctly, use modern leak detection techniques, put an end to the enormous waste in agriculture uh, and desalinate seawater or reuse wastewater. It, it's a question of moving towards sharing resources while uh, avoiding waste and education the younger generation which is very very important educating them on the importance of saving resource that's what we, we could say concerning water security um thank you thank you so much mr luke fashon for answering the question about the water security but also for making a wonderful very analytical yet very inspiring presentation of the water issues on the planet I especially liked how you said in the beginning that all crises are interconnected and uh, we have the climate crisis, the water crisis, the biodiversity crisis, but in fact all of them are caused by human behavior and the models of our global economies. And this is why even when water issue is a global issue, like you say, is a global priority, it's still many of the decisions and most of the decisions have to be made at the local level, also at the level of the cities. And you've indeed brought a number of very interesting examples of the way uh, water deficient regions are trying to work with water deficiency and uh, water security. My next question to you is, um, we keep talking about providing enough water and securing enough water for humans, but can we actually balance uh, producing enough water for humans and having enough water for nature, for the ecosystems, for other species on our planet? Uh, yes, it's possible, but it's really necessary. Since the beginning of times, uh, climate has always known uh, variations through storms, typhoons and tidal waves, or dreadful lacks of water. 30 years ago, 
uh, uh, great droughts in Africa caused millions of deaths, millions of deaths. And the lack of water often causes more human damage than excess of water. This requires preventing water-related disasters. The climate must not be blamed for everything. It must not be the scapegoat of human mistakes. The errors are caused by men's mistakes when building in, for example, river beds or along seashores. When river flood or when the sea rages, we say it's the climate. No, this has always happened, but if we must secure water for humans, we must at the same time secure water for nature. Water for nature. On one hand, water for man, on the other hand, water for nature. It's the same fight. And since the beginning of the 21st century, a new imperative has been added. Humans have greatly understood that they must conserve part of their water for nature to enhance biodiversity and protect uh, wildlife and ecosystem. That's the reason uh, we, we need to move uh, in the same times uh, to, for water for men and for water for nature. Um, thank you so much, Mr. Louis Fashon. Unfortunately, we're running out of time, but I would really like to thank you again for your wonderful and very inspiring lecture and for also answering uh, some of the questions which we had. Unfortunately, we cannot ask them all at the moment. Thank you so much. Thank you for giving us um, a global picture, uh, a very disturbing picture for the future, yet a picture which also offers some hope, uh, also in terms of urban management and urban water solutions. Let us stay in thank touch. You. Thank you for being Thank with you. us. All the best from Moscow. It was our pleasure. Thank you. Have a nice yes. day. Yeah. Uh, dear friends, our session is, is about to finish. Stay with us. Other sessions keep the working.